everyone. Welcome back to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service's Conservation Connect. My name is Chelsea McKinney, your host, as we explore various conservation careers, new species, and different types of technology that conservation professionals use to observe wildlife. Today, we're coming to you from Blackwater National Wildlife Refuge in Cambridge, Maryland, on Maryland's eastern shore. Here, where tidal wetlands meet the waters of Chesapeake Bay, wildlife is abundant, shorebirds, marsh birds, and crabs are all plentiful. Blackwater National Wildlife Refuge is just one of more than 560 national wildlife refuges across the country. These special protected places are home to osprey, eagles, waterfowl, and one endangered species in particular, the Delmarva fox squirrel, which we'll learn about today. These guys are not your typical squirrel. They're bigger in size and behave differently than squirrels you might see in your backyard. Today, I'm with Dr. Carol Bassetti, a professor at California University of Pennsylvania, and Dr. Cherry Keller from Chesapeake Bay Field Office with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Dr. Bassetti has been working with the Delmarva Fox Squirrel recovery efforts for 18 years. That's probably longer than most of you have been alive, which means she knows a lot about this species. Dr. Keller is the Delmarva Fox Squirrel Recovery Lead for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. She's working with Dr. Bassetti and with Dr. Meredith Patron to develop a genetics test to identify individual squirrels just from their hair alone. Mm -hmm. It's so nice to meet you both. Nice to meet you. Nice to be here. <laughs> Dr. Bassetti, may I start with you? Can I ask you to tell us a little bit about the Delmarva Fox Squirrel and what makes it so unique? Yeah, it's very unique because for one thing, it only lives on the Delmarva Peninsula. It likes these wet, very mature forests. And that's the last thing that's unique about this species is that it is really committed to these mature forests where you can see very far in the understory. That's what they prefer. Dr. Keller, can you talk to us about how it became an endangered species? Yeah, originally this squirrel was everywhere on the Delmarva Peninsula. The reasons we think it declined in distribution were there was losses of forest as forest was being cleared to agriculture, and there was a predominant focus on raising trees for paper, which is small timber, and so trees never got to be the big mature forest that you see here. The other part is there was some overhunting in the early parts where people were squirrel hunting for subsistence for dinner. Um, in the 1940s and 50s, uh, some of the early records said the Delmarva really filled a skillet. And that was <laughs> one of the reasons when you're choosing between a gray squirrel or a Delmarva for dinner, I'm afraid you might pick the Delmarva. <laughs> but um, hunting has been controlled now and um, hunting is better regulated now. So sure. it's, it's in better shape now for sure. When it was listed, the first thing that the recovery team folks did as working with their state partners is take squirrels from a place like Dorchester where they're very abundant and start new populations on the landscape in other areas of their historic range. And that was done 16 times and 11 of those are still successful today. And that's actually a very good very success good. rate for an endangered species. Now, as a biologist, it's really important we know what the populations are doing what kinds of technologies are you using as a biologist to keep track of how many Delmarva fox squirrels there are in certain given areas? Yeah, we do a lot with technology actually. So uh, we uh, use live traps and we go out and capture them and we put marks on them and release them in the same place. And then we look to see uh, when we come out again, how many of those that we mark do we capture again? And we can estimate population size through an analysis called mark recapture analysis. And I'll show you the pit tag that we use, <clears throat> if you can see. It's uh, only about the size of a grain of rice. Wow. Uh, pit tag stands for passive integrated transponder. And it's so tiny because it doesn't have to have an energy source. Uh, and so we need a reader, uh, uh, a transponder reader, which is the energy source. And it sends a signal and bounces back off of this. And this sends it a barcode. And that barcode identifies the individual. 
And it's the same technology that you see in the grocery store, actually. When you scan an item across, then you hear that beep. Yep. That's telling the, the register, charge them for this particular item. Well, we do the same thing. We put the reader over it. It says beep, and it tells us an individual code that says this is this particular squirrel. So we've just caught a squirrel. We're, we checked to scan it um, to see if it had a pit tag. It did not. Um, so they're injecting a pit tag in right now. We've scanned it here. So this is a pit tag scanner that reads a special ID number that allows us to identify that individual squirrel. So we are now working with some hair snags where we can pull hair, the tail hair, the long tail hair from a squirrel, and in the follicle is enough genetics, um, enough DNA, to actually allow us to and identify the individual. And our hope um, is that we'll be able to then tell individual animals and really be getting a sense of how many individual animals are in the woods as well as their presence. What is it that we can do, what our viewers can do, to help protect wildlife? Well, I think the Demara fox squirrel is a good example of uh, taking an interest in a species and just paying close attention and observing. Maybe your viewers can find their own species that they're passionate about and bring the next species closer to coming off the endangered species list. Absolutely. Well, you guys have already sold me. I'm already attached <laughs> to Demara fox squirrel too. So thank you. It'll never go away. Oh, good. <laughs> thank you it's both well. so very much for being with us today. You're very welcome. Sure. It's good to be here. <laughs>